okay, so we know mu alpha chemical potential of alpha phase is equal to chemical potential of beta phase okay, when phase alpha is in equilibrium with beta phase. Okay. So, here we have alpha phase, alpha phase and here is beta phase, they are in equilibrium with each other. So, from here you can write write del mu alpha by del p at constant temperature times d p plus del mu alpha plus uh, del mu alpha by del t at constant pressure times d t equals to del mu beta by del p at constant temperature times d p times del mu beta by del t at constant pressure times d p. Okay. And we know that del mu alpha by del p at constant temperature is nothing but molar volume of alpha phase right we already discussed so so this gives you v bar alpha times dp minus and del mu alpha by del t at constant pressure we already know this is nothing but molar entropy of alpha phase so we can write s alpha bar times dt and in the right hand side also similarly you can write s beta bar times v beta bar times dp minus s beta bar times dt okay so we can write V bar, we can rearrange the things minus V beta bar times dp is nothing but S alpha bar minus S beta bar times dt. So, we can further simplify this one as dp by dt is delta S bar transition we can write by delta V bar transition right. So, where delta S bar transition is nothing but S alpha minus S beta and delta V transition nothing but V alpha bar minus V beta bar. Okay, okay. So, we get this and we know delta H transition is nothing but T times delta S transition. Okay. So, if we substitute this here, we get dp by dt is 
delta h transition by t times delta v transition okay and this equation is known as clapeyron equation Okay. So, this equation is known as Clapeyron. So, d p by d t equals to delta h transition by t times delta v transition is known as Clapeyron equation. Okay. So, next we will consider the equation. So, d p by the one we already derived just now, we have already derived. So, d p by d t is delta s transition by delta v transition and we also know d p by d t nothing but we just derive this delta h transition by t times delta v transition okay. and this equation it relates the slope of the two phase boundary line in a phase diagram or to be specific in P T we set temperature plot that we will we'll see, we will see it today with the values of delta H transition and delta V transition for a transition between two phases. Okay, now, we will consider the equation d p by d t so delta s transition by delta V transition. Now, we consider for solid ice to liquid water transition. Okay. So, here for, for this transition, you have solidized, it goes to liquid water. So, delta S transition is positive, right? Because you have solidized, it goes to liquid water. Okay? So, disorderness increases here. So, delta S transition is positive. And what about delta V? Delta V represent as you know change in molar, molar, molar change in molar volume, right? So delta V transition means V of liquid water minus V of ice, right? Now molar volume of ice is higher than molar volume of liquid water. So, this gives you negative quantity. So, it says these two conditions they imply that d p by d t is negative. Fine. Okay. So, if we plot p versus t then for the transition solidized to liquid water 
we get negative slope right and it says what further it says that it further implies that melting point of ice decreases with increasing pressure. Right? So, melting point of ice decreases with increasing pressure, it says. Okay. Now, you consider for liquid water to water vapor transition. So, in this case also delta S transition is positive, right? Because liquid water goes to water vapor, so to chaosness increases, okay. So, entropy change is positive. Now, what about delta V transition? So, delta V transition is nothing but V bar of water vapor minus V bar of liquid water. And we know molar volume of gas is much, much higher than molar volume of liquid. So, it gives a positive quantity. Okay. It says that dP by dt is positive. Right? So, it implies that boiling point of water increases with increasing pressure. So, because dp dt is positive means we can say dp dt dp also positive, right? this is also positive. So, we have seen that if we consider the solidized to liquid water transition, delta S transition is positive and delta V transition is negative. So, it gives that dP dt is negative, right. So, dP dt is negative means dT dp is also negative, which suggests that melting point of ice decreases with increasing pressure. And for liquid water to water vapor transition, delta S transition is positive and delta V transition is also positive. These two quantities, they imply that dP dt is positive, which says that dT, dT dP is also positive. And this implies boiling point of water increases with increasing pressure. Very good. Now, we will consider solid ice to water vapor transition. And for this case, delta S, delta S transition is again positive because solid ice goes to water vapor. So, chaosness increases. What about delta V? So, delta V transition. Delta V transition is nothing but V bar solid ice minus V bar water vapor. Or the other way here actually. Okay, because it solid ice goes to water vapor. So, V water vapor, water vapor 
minus V solidize and it is also a positive quantity because molar volume of water vapor is much much higher than the molar volume of solidize. So, it says so they these two they imply DPDT is positive which says DTDP is also positive right and they imply that the sublimation temperature increases with with increasing with with increasing pressure Okay, now we will consider the absolute or or we would like to quantify the delta V transition and delta S transition. Okay, let us see and how they differ for these three transitions. Now, delta V transition for liquid to vapor. is very similar to that of is that of solid to vapor transition, but So, these two say this to imply that dp by dt for solid to vapor is higher than dp by dt. So, we get a steeper slope for solid to vapor transition than that for liquid to vapor transition. Okay. Now, we know the phase diagram of water, but we are again drawing with the information we have now. Okay. So, this is a pressure and this is temperature in Kelvin. pressure in bar suppose. So, we get curve like this, this and this so, properly drawn here. Okay. So, here you get solid ice, this is the region solid ice. this is water vapor and this is liquid water. Okay. And if we draw line like this, okay, so we get the point it touches here is this is nothing but your boiling point and this is uh, 
this is the melting point or freezing point whatever you say and this is this point where all three phases here this at this point they coexist this is known as triple point or T3. So, T3 is the triple point Tb is the boiling point at pressure P equals to P1 bar here this is P1 and Tf is the freezing point or freezing temperature or freezing temperature and boiling temperature at pressure P equals to P 1 bar and T 3 is triple point. Right. So, triple point. So, this is suppose this is our point O here, O and then we can level O A, B, C, or triple point, point O. Okay. And here along line O A along line O A solid ice and liquid water coexist. Okay. Similarly, along line O B or O B represents liquid water and water vapor coexistence line and so on. Okay. So, what we discussed so far, we, we derived Clapeyron equation and with the help of Clapeyron equation, we could able to draw the phase diagram of water or rather P T diagram of water. So, so far whatever we discussed we consider ideal gas. Okay. Now, we will consider non-ideality. Okay. So, for non-ideal gas fugacity is the measure of non non ideality of a gas okay so what is fugacity we will discuss so we know molar gives free energy per molar gives free energy at constant temperature and pressure you can write like and P 0 here P 0 or P naught is one at one atmosphere or one bar whatever you consider okay one bar. So, P naught is one bar okay how did we get that equation? We got this equation or we obtained this equation starting from del G by del P at constant temperature. Suppose this is our equation 1 here and this is equation 2. And then what we did? If you see, look at equation 2, what we did? We basically did like dg is 
v bar d p and for v bar we use the ideal gas equation ok. So, n is 1 here. So, v bar is nothing but r t by p and then we integrated ok on integrating we get this equation right. So, we will now we will now generalize equation 1 to the case of a real gas. Okay. Now, we will the equation 1 we will we will generalize for a for a real gas. So, if we consider a virial gas equation okay. So, we, we, we could start with so we start with start with the virial expansion. Okay, so, we know for virial expansion P V bar by R T is nothing but 1 plus etcetera. Okay, where B 2 P, B 3 P these quantities are uh, virial coefficients you know ok. And we we get ideal gas equation from virial gas equation ok, when B 2, B 3 those terms are very, very small or negligible ok. So, so we could arrive to ideal gas equation in those conditions ok. Now, from here you can write B bar is we take the RT other side like this. So, this is V bar. Now, we already know V bar is nothing but del G bar by del P at constant temperature. Okay. So, this is nothing but R T times 1 by P plus So, we can write d g bar like this ok. You can further write, it, write like this ok, where basically what we are doing here we are where we are integrating f 
from some low pressure say the ideal where the gas is CO2 to behave ideally to some arbitrary pressure T. So, basically we are integrating from P i d to P, where P i d is, is very low or very small pressure, where the gas molecules they behave ideally okay? and P is some arbitrary pressure. So, we can do the integration, we can write so, we can write G prime sorry G bar is G naught T or rather G T P ideal okay, plus T ln P by P ideal plus R T times B two P times P plus R T by two times B three P T p to the 2 and so on. Okay. So, suppose this is our equation 3. Okay. So, now for from equation 1 we can write G bar T P ideal nothing but G naught T plus a T ln P ideal by P naught. Okay. So, this is our this we can write. Okay. So, where G naught T is molar gives gives energy or gives free energy of an ideal gas okay at a pressure of p naught equals to 1 bar so, we can write G bar T P is G naught T plus R T So, we can say that this is our equation 4 okay. and this equation 4 is 
this exact equation. exact equation. Okay, so, equation 4 is a general equation and is valid for all gases, right? Although equation four is an exact equation, it varies or it differs. for each gas depending on the values of B 2 P T, P 3 P T, etcetera. Okay. So, although equation 4 is an exact equation, but it depends or it differs for each gas. Okay. So, because this in the this for, for different gas molecules the value of B 2 P, B 3 P etcetera are different. Okay. Now, from equation 4 we can write we can write G bar T p is nothing but G naught t plus R t l n f p t by f naught. This is equation 5. So, what is f p t and f naught? So, where f P t by f naught is nothing but p by p naught then e to the like this okay and this is equation 6 and f p t is nothing but fugacity. And in this term known in ideality is but it. Okay. In this term non ideality is but it. Okay. And f p t goes to p as p goes to 0. Okay. When pressure is very, very small, then f p t goes to p. So, we need to know few things here. Okay. Note here, this is important, important to note. The standard state in equation 1 and in equation 4 is taken to be the the same quantity. Thus, the standard state of 
of the real gas in equation 4 is taken to be the corresponding ideal gas of ideal gas at the or at one bar at one bar pressure. In other words, the standard state of the of the real gas is one bar after it has been adjusted to ideal behavior. So, you should note this one, okay. the standard state in equation 1 and in equation 4 is taken to be the same quantity, they are the same quantity. Thus, the standard state of the real gas in equation 4 is taken to be the corresponding ideal gas at one, at one bar pressure. Okay. In other words, the standard state of the real gas is 1 bar after it has been adjusted to ideal behavior. So, you should, you should, you should remember that. Okay. Thus, you can write goes to P as B goes to 0 as all gas all gas says behave ideally when P goes to 0. Okay. Very low pressure all gases they behave ideally. Okay. Thus, thus the choice of of the choice of standard state not only allows all gases to be brought to a single common state, but also leads to a procedure to calculate fugacity, to calculate if Pt at any pressure and temperature. Okay. Thus, the choice of standard state not only allows all gases to be brought to a single common state, but also leads to a procedure to calculate F p t or fugacity at any pressure and 
temperature. Okay, thank you.